to you, the IT minister has refuted uh, claims and charges of Jack Dorsey saying that it's an outright lie. India has the right to ensure that its laws were followed and Twitter was not doing that back then. As a, again, I would repeat, the same minister was silent when women were being harassed on these platforms. The same minister was silent when hate propaganda continued to dominate the narrative on social media platforms. These ministers were silent when Bharatiya Janata Party was weaponizing their own agenda on social media platforms. And today, Jack Dorsey has said exactly what uh, Elon Musk has said, that in India, the laws are extremely strict. And if he ha had given a choice between his employees being jailed and compliance, he would have to force to be uh, uh, compliant with the rules simply because the laws are so strict. And it could jail the employees. So what is uh, Jack Dorsey saying, which is any different from what we saw during the farmers' protest? MPs were silent. Members of parliament of the opposition were suspended. A law was passed totally against the democratic norms of having a discussion and debate and dissent, hearing dissent. We had, them, uh, ha we had farmers being called anti-nationals. We, we had farmers being called terrorists. We had a propaganda which went on to say that they were being funded by foreign agencies. So what Jack Dorsey has said is nothing different. And uh, uh, India has witnessed how our Twitter offices were raided. Under the garb of compliance of laws, right. you were trying to silence opposition voices. You were trying to silence the farmer protest. What happened ultimately? You were humbled to take it back. But uh, Ms. Chaturvedi, do you believe that when it comes to, you know, an intermediary company like Twitter, is it above the Indian laws, ma'am? When did I say if it should be above Indian laws? Indian laws should be in compliance with going, back, going to the democratic and constitutional principles of this nation. In fact, I was at the forefront of creating guidelines. We should ensure that all these Western platforms which are operating in India, which use India as a market, are held accountable. But accountability does not come on the basis of, you know, silencing opposition. It has to be a balanced narrative. The policy should have been more balanced. I have criticized the policy. And I continue to say, today BJP has weaponized this policy. Tomorrow it could be any other political party in power which will weaponize it. And that is the unfortunate part of democracy and how democratic principles are being tilted in the favor of the BJP and the ruling dispensation. All right, Priyanka Chaturvedi, thank you very much for joining us. Priyanka Chaturvedi, they're saying that we criticized the policy back then as well. Twitter should have complied with the laws, but it was through Twitter that the government was trying to muzzle free speech and the opposition's concerns. I told that Mr. Majid Memon is with us here on the broadcast. Sir, good morning to you. How do you uh, look at the response coming in from the government of India to Twitter and uh, to Jack Dorsey in particular, saying that all of them, which is being said, and, uh, and a situation that is now being trying to put up, that there is suppression of freedom of speech speech in India, that's an outright lie, sir. There are sensitive issues where you try to curb, you know, someone from uh, expressing oneself, you always take the risk of violating the constitutional rights of this uh, party. And in fact, whenever you want to bring any kind of restriction or imposing any ban or any kind of that, that sort of stoppage of expression of... Uh, uh, any individual or any organization, then in that event you have to be a little cautious. You can't be rash and you can't express your anger and emotionally you can't just take an action because you are in power. Uh, we would advise the government, not as an opposition leader, but you see as a person who respects law, who respects rights, who respects constitution, that you have to be a bit slow and there you must examine whether a case is made out for imposing any kind of restriction or bringing any impediment on the freedom of expression. Mm. Even if it is Twitter or whether the social media also, we are seeing that if somebody posts some photograph, then you start uh, slapping them with Makoka or some such serious rights. And these are matters which uh, unfortunately injures the spirit of the right, individual's right, which of course must be upheld, which must be respected. So I am only suggesting that our friends who are sitting in a position of power you know, should go a bit slow or rather take some advice from the legal experts or from the courts before hmm. taking any such action. All right. Mr. Memon, thank you very much for joining us here on the broadcast. So as we are also looking at the legal perspective there, especially when it comes to uh, the, uh, the situation that was during the farmer's term. And this is what Jack Dorsey has been pointing out. In fact, talking about Indians, uh, India's internal affairs, which the government of India has been saying that Twitter at that point in time was in violation of Indian laws. For the moment, thank you very much, Pragya, Ashwarya and Nyamika to you as well. We'll just come back with more reactions on this developing story back after a short break.